Good morning, mga kapatid. Good morning. I said, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> mga kapatid, my name is Dante Angeles. You know, yeah. uh, I was given the opportunity to take the place of Brother Paul, who's taking a vacation in the Philippines at the moment. You know, I was a little bit hesitant to the pastor. I said, pastor, I never done that before. You know, that kind of uh, making some excuses. Right? But when God says, you're going to be there, you're going to be there. Amen? Amen. Yes. Anyway, <clears throat> man, I agree with the pastor. There are two brothers only today, right? One is the elder, one is the younger, right? I'm not the elder, elder, okay? I'm only the elder by eight. <laughs> the real elder is Brother Jess with all his wisdom and all that, right? Anyways, by age, I mentioned, listen to this. I woke up this morning, right? As soon as I wake up, I raise my hand right there, laying down in the bed. God, thank you. Thank you for another Sunday that's not promised, right? I tell you what, I step out of bed. My back is aching, right? I didn't have enough sleep, right? So my face is all wrinkled up and ugly, okay? Was this. I walk towards the restroom. I look at myself again one more time, okay? Because, right, because I wake up with grateful attitude, right? With an attitude of gratitude. I see myself smiling, you know? <laughs> I was smiling and I tell this to myself. Dante, you are wonderfully and fearfully created. Amen. I hug myself like this and I say, Dante, you're looking good. Amen. And then I go by my way, right? I go by my way. Simple words from the verse can lift you up more than sometimes you can imagine. Sometimes you cannot understand, you know? Anyway. <clears throat> It says, let me share with you the book of the day. Oops, I mentioned smiling. Let me go back a little bit, right? You know, from smiling, I was laughing. I mentioned that, right? You know what, my kapatid? Sometimes a beautiful day begins with a little smile. Look at the person beside you and give him a little smile. <laughs> Okay, let me share with you the, the word of the day, okay? A reading from Book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 4. It says, say to, oops, say to him, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of this, two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce and anger of Rezim and Aram and all of the son of Rimalia. Good morning, Sister David. <laughs> then we'll go to Isaiah 9.6. For us, for to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Thank none. I was sitting down there beside the wife, right? And I go, God, talk to me, right? I see Brother Will walking around. God, talk to me. And the thing that ring in my head, okay, was John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world, he gave the word, the key word is love and gave, okay? His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, so that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Love and give. When you have love, it's almost impossible not to give. Amen? Amen. All right. Father God, we just want to thank you, Father God, for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, the only way, the truth, and the life. 
through Jesus Christ, only but through Jesus Christ, that we be able to walk with you, Father God, in heaven some of these days. <clears throat> Father God, <clears throat> there are so many people out there at this time of the year that are going through changes. Some are depressed, some are lonely. Father God, we pray that through the service we have today that you fill us up with your power, Father God, so that we be able to share your love, your peace, your comfort and joy to those out there, most especially the ones that are in need. All these we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are we are privileged today to uh, have with us Brother Jess shares to us the word of the Lord. I would like to ask him to please come and let's just pray for Brother Jess. We would like to thank you, Father, that we are once again going to receive something coming from you through your servant. And we would like to ask that you will prepare our hearts and our minds as we come into your presence in worship and be receptive of your word this morning. If there is something that would hinder us from truly experiencing your presence, the blessing of your presence and receiving the message of your word, we ask that in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will remove all those things that will hinder us. And I pray that you will just allow him, allow Brother Jess to speak to us through, through your word, loving Father, and that whatever that you wanted him to speak and to be shared, you allow him to do that in the power of your name. Loving Father, we ask that uh, the, the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart be pleasing and be acceptable unto you as we come and worship you through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Lord. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Mas kabado ako kasi nandito si Pastor rin dati-dati. Anyway, I hope you guys are done with your Christmas shopping. Um, kasi two days, Pasko na. Um, children from all over the world have waited for this time of year. You know, very excited sila na dumating ang Pasko. I know that when that day comes, it will be chaos in every house. Children, even adults, will be frantically weeping and tearing their, tear, tear their gifts wrappings, wanting to see what's inside the box. Somehow, Christmas is associated with shopping and gift giving, but I'm not going to be talking about shopping because I'm an expert of that. I think I have to choose Ate Jing and uh, Rose <laughs> to do that for us. So we will be talking about gift, most specifically, yung, uh, the greatest gift. Yung uh, shopping and gift giving is a tradition. It's always been a tradition associated with Christmas. According to some reports, average American will be spending $700 to buy presents. And half those will be going for children. No wonder this is also the season when you don't see ninangs and ninongs. Kasi nagtatago sila. Just like me, kasama na ako doon. So why do we give gifts? I can think of two things why we give gifts. First is because of love. We give gifts so that we can show how uh, the, our affection to that other person. We also want to show them how much we care for them. And we also want to show them how grateful we are that they are a part of our lives. And the other reason that motivates us to give gifts is because of duty and obligation. Um, sometimes when we receive gift, we feel compelled to give one as well. Diba medyo ganun yun? We feel guilty if we don't give back. Kapag hindi tayo nagbigay sa nagbigay sa atin, medyo guilty tayo. We feel, we feel that we have to reciprocate whenever we receive a gift. Well, more than 2,000 years ago, all of us received a gift. A gift sent from heaven. This is a gift like no other. This is a gift that keeps on giving. We all wanted to give a perfect gift, right? To use the popular quote that was popularized by Brother Julio, 
I would say, this is it. This is the gift. <laughs> and, um, and this is a gift not even because of duty or obligation. This gift was given because of love. This gift is also unique, for this gift has power. It could change lives. It gives hope to the hopeless, gives peace to the restless, and gives strength to the weak. Amen. This gift does not change. Hindi siya nagbabago. It doesn't get old. Hindi ito matanda. It doesn't get ruined. It will remain the same forever and will never pass away. Amen. This gift has a given, was given a name. A name that is above all names. A name whom everyone and everything will bow down to. His name is Jesus. According to John 3.16, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this verse. In this verse, we see that God gave His only Son to us. And that is why this gift is so unique. And unlike any other. In this sermon, I will give you uh, some unique characteristics of this gift and how we treated it. The first one is, Uh, the, this gift is unsolicited. Unsolicited means we never ask for this gift. We never ask for Jesus. This time of season, we will see a lot of these in every mall across America. I'm not referring to sell items. I'm talking about Santa Claus. You see Santa Claus in every mall with children lining up to take pictures with him. There's some picture of Victoria. These children are so excited to tell Santa what they want for Christmas. In reality, sa totoong buhay, hindi lang naman bata ang excited to tell what, what they want for Christmas. One example is our spouse, yung mga asawa natin. Our spouse tells us way in advance that they would like to see, what, what would they like to see under the tree? Malayo pa. Sinesa, sinesa atin pa, anong gusto nila. Just like Rose, tulad ni Rose, September pa lang, nagpaparinig na. <laughs> she wanted to have an LV purse for Christmas. Well, for being a good husband, I bought her an LV purse, of course. <laughs> Yun nga lang hindi Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Kung di, lumang bag. <laughs> bag. Yung galing pa sa Goodwill. Anyway, so why do we never ask for Jesus? How come di natin hiningi ito? Because we didn't know what we need. We didn't know that we need Him, so we didn't ask. Hindi natin alam na kailangan natin siya, kaya natin hindi hiningi. Just, just like the woman in the video, no? She was busy buying gift. In doing so, she forgot the greatest gift. Just like her, you and I are always busy. Busy tayo sa work, busy tayo sa family. We are just so busy with life that we forgot about God. Praise God, you know, He was not too busy for us. Because before we even knew that we needed salvation, He already set a plan to save us. Naka-plan na yun from the beginning. In Revelation 13, 8, the Bible says concerning about Jesus, the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. God has always been the initiator. Siya lang yung nagsismula. Just look at Adam and Eve when they first sinned and fled from the presence of the Lord in the garden. Sino ang, who was the first one to look for the Adam? It was God. Sabi ni God, Where are you, Adam? As we can see from here, Adam saw, it wasn't Adam who saw his need and sought God. It was God who, knowing Adam's need, sought him. Again, I will repeat that. It wasn't Adam who saw his need and sought God. It was God who, knowing Adam's need, sought him. Another example that we can find in the Bible is the man born blind in John 9. 
if you he if you read the whole passage, you will notice that there are a lot of similarities between this man and us. Pretty sure siya may mga na tong janan sabi na sa Bible study nila tayo. The two similarities that really stands for me are number one. This man is blind from birth. Like him, we are blind from birth. He was blind physically, and we are blind spiritually. The second one is that Jesus was the one who saw him. It was Jesus who first looked for him. Again, if you read the first verse, the blind man is totally different from any other blind man that Jesus healed. The other blind man, they were yelling and screaming out for his name. For Jesus to come and heal them. But this man didn't do anything. He was just probably sitting there or standing. It was Jesus who came to him and started healing him of his blindness. He didn't even ask for Jesus to heal him. Kasi, kasi ba, usually, tao nang malapit kay Jesus for, for, for their healing. Pero itong tao to, he didn't ask. Just like this man, we were too busy being blind to see what we really need. The second unique characteristic of this gift is that this is an unwanted gift. No one wanted this gift. Naalala ko tuloy yung uh, Mexican beat ball na <laughs> nahihingi ako ng picture pero hindi <laughs> ako ako ng picture. It's okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys, oh wow, yung mga tao lang na nandito, you guys remember the yung Mexican people that no one wants to, ano, na makuha yung gift na yung pinagpapasahan. Yeah, for three years, right? Uh, so anyway, um, that gift, like Jesus, he was marked for rejection. Talagang ayos sa kanya. Even before he was uh, born, he has already experienced rejection. This, is, this was coming from the innkeeper, remember? The innkeeper was like saying, we have no more room for you guys. All throughout the Bible, makikita natin yung rejection kay Jesus. One example is sa Mark 6.3. Ito, pinapakita yung sarili niyang community. Jesus' own community has rejected and ostracized him and his family. Ang sabi kasi dito sa verse na to is, ang background ng verse na to is that people were asking one another because Jesus was talking at the sen- uh, synagogue. Sabi ng tao, is this the carpenter? Isn't he the son of Mary? To be called the son of your mother instead of the son of your father is an insult at that time. Pag ako tinawag na anak ako ni Rosita, insulto para sa akin yun. Dapat ang tawag sa akin yung anak ako ng tatay. Because what they were trying to say is that they're not sure if Joseph was a real father. Siguro, umabot na sa kanilang chismes niya na si Mary was um, pregnant, hindi si Joseph ang tatay. Yun nga, and si Mary has an affair and Jesus was born out of wedlock. Meaning that Jesus was an illegitimate child to them. Okay? So how about his friends? Sa mga kaibigan niya, Rejected din siya. Remember when he was arrested? Nagtago, nagtakbuhan, and all that. They, they all fled. Even his best friend abandoned and denied him when someone asked him, kilala siya o hindi. And finally, this is very sad, even his father rejected him. And this happened when he was dying at the cross. And that is why he asked him, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Again, ito yung uh, isa sa mga last seven words na sinabi ni Lord. At hindi, hindi ka sabi yung, this is it. Okay. <laughs> you see, from birth to his last moment on this earth, Jesus was rejected. He was rejected all his life. Kawa naman si Lord. No? Praise God. Even though we rejected Jesus, He didn't reject us. Amen. Actually, God rejected His own Son so we could be accepted by Him. The third and the last unique characteristic about this gift is that this is an unclaimed gift. 
As a parent, I would be so sad if the gift that I worked for, to work hard for, and I put a lot of sacrifices to it, will be ignored and left untouched under the tree. Kasi, siyempre, pinaghirapan natin, pinag-ipunan, and yet, binigyan natin sa ating anak. Hindi rin naman pala uh, kukuhain nyo sa... Hindi uh, nila kukuhain. Imagine you bought a gift for your kids. You put a lot of time and thought into the gift. You wrap it carefully, place it under the Christmas tree, and when Christmas came, they picked up every gift except yours. That would really hurt. Okay, John. And this is what happened when God offered the world's greatest gift in the person of His Son, Jesus. For many people, that gift remains unclaimed. In John 1.11, tells us that He came to what was His own, but his own people did not receive him. By not claiming the gift, these people, among other things, will never experience the hope and joy of salvation. They will never know how much God loves them. They will never know the meaning of grace. So no matter what gift has been provided for you, you don't have it until you receive it. Make, makes sense, right? It's available to everyone, this gift. But God doesn't force it to anyone. We have to receive it. We have to take the package, open the box, and accept it as our own. We have to make the decision to receive Jesus Christ into our lives. And in John 1, 12, it says, Yet to all who receive Him, to those who believe in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. So my appeal to you this morning is this. Don't leave Christ under the tree. That gift from God has a tag with your name on it. There is no better day than Christmas to renew your commitment to Christ or a better day to begin a new life of relationship with Him. So take Jesus into your heart and into your life, even now. With that, I just want to say good morning and Merry Christmas. Yeah.